Welcome everyone this morning here in the name of the Lord on this fifth Sunday of Easter where today Jesus is going to tell us just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you get a free pass with regards to the trials and the sufferings of this life. And so we're going to tackle the question today in the midst of all that, where do we find hope? Where do we find joy? Where do we find comfort? And whom has Jesus sent to help us with these things? And that will be the words we hear from our Lord today as he's in the upper room just a day before his death. He's going to give his disciples that comfort and peace and give that to us here today as well. So we'll begin our worship then with our opening hymn as we sing hymn 475, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Of me. Why should we remember and proclaim his death? 
First, so that we may learn to believe that no creature could make satisfaction for our sins. Only Christ, true God and man, could do that. Second, so that we may learn to be horrified by our sins and to regard them as very serious. Third, so that we may find joy and comfort in Christ alone and through faith in Him be saved. Finally, why do you wish to go to the sacrament? That I may learn to believe that Christ, out of great love, died for my sin. I also learn from Him to love God and my neighbor. What should admonish and encourage a Christian to receive the sacrament frequently? First, hold the command and promise of Christ the Lord. Second, His own pressing need, because of which the command encouragement, and and promise are given. But what should you do if you're not aware of this need and have no hunger and thirst for the sacrament? To such a person, no better advice can be given than this. First, he should touch his body to see if he still has flesh and blood. Second, he should look around to see whether he is still in the world and remember that there will be no lack of sin and trouble. Third, he would certainly have a devil also around him, with his lying and murdering day and night, let him have no peace within or without. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. I invite the congregation then to please me. I, a poor sinner, we are guilty before God of all sins. I live as if God did not matter most, and as if I matter most. My, my Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me. And so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt, and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I am sorry for all of this and ask for grace. I want to do better. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Instead of by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have made the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. That among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. Our first reading then for this fifth Sunday of Easter is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, the 11th chapter. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, he went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheep descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times. And all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. 
These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle then is taken from the revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John, the 21st chapter. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let the congregation please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter in this reading, as well as the previous readings, will help inform and be the basis then of our sermon then this day. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now. But I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We confess then our common faith with the words of the Nicene. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, 
very God, the very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May we see that as we sing our hymn of the day, 480, He's Risen, He's Risen.
may be seated. Dear fellow redeemed, the sermon is based on the gospel reading from John. But first, I want to go back to the Old Testament for a moment, to Exodus. Now this was not one of our readings today, but I think that we know the stories quite well of the Israelites. So specifically, after the Lord miraculously delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt through the Red Sea, they wandered for three days in the wilderness without water. And they came to a place called Mara. But the water there was so bitter that they couldn't drink it. The Lord was testing the Israelites. So the Israelites responded, of course, by grumbling, because they had nothing to drink except bitter water. So Moses cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard his cry as he always did. And he showed Moses a tree. And Moses took this tree and threw it into the water. And the water became sweet, and the people drank. After that, they left Mara and continued their journey and came to a place called Elam. And at Elam, there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees. It was here that they could be strengthened and refreshed for their continued journey through the wilderness. Such is our life today as part of the true Israelites, true believers, traveling through this wilderness of life faced with bitter waters of sorrow and suffering. Now the Red Sea represents baptism, and the wilderness represents this sinful world after baptism. Baptized into Christ, yet we still live in this world where we face bitterness, sorrow, and suffering. You all know this through your own experience. And it's through these afflictions that God tests us, and he tries us. He wants us to know that it's only by his grace and mercy that we live and move and have our being in this world. The life of God in his Son defines our life. This bitterness and suffering is not apart from Christ's life. Even if our life is filled with much pain and suffering and hardship because of our own sin or the sin of others, even as Christ has suffered, we must suffer. But God sweetens the bitterness of this life. Like the tree that Moses threw into the bitter waters of Mara, God chose a tree to throw into the bitter waters of our life in order to make them sweet. Even in the midst of suffering and sorrow. And that tree was the bloody cross of Jesus. It's the bloody cross of the Lamb who was slain and yet lives that sweetens our bitter afflictions. And once again today, the Lord sets before us this tree of life, Christ, in his word, and at his table. He takes that tree, and he sinks it into our bitterness, and once again we are refreshed. And the crosses we bear become a little lighter under the yoke of Jesus. It's this teaching about the cross and comfort that Jesus brings to his disciples and to us in the gospel that we heard in John today. There is hope in the midst of bitter suffering and pain and sorrow because of that bloody tree that God threw into our lives. So on this fifth Sunday after Easter, Jesus is risen, our sins are forgiven, life and salvation are truly ours today. And the Spirit is at work preserving, sanctifying, and guiding us into all truth. But yet things are not quite finished in this mortal life. We must persevere. You know, the great joy that we felt on Easter a few weeks ago, it, sometimes it seems to fade a bit as time continues marching forward in the church here. I mean, the enemy is defeated, but he continues to rear his ugly head that our sinful flesh is put to death, that it's resurrected with Jesus in baptism. But still, this flesh weighs heavy on the journey through life. The apostle in Acts didn't lie when he said that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. And neither did Jesus lie in our gospel reading today when he said, you will weep and lament. Jesus didn't say that you might weep and lament. 
but you will. These aren't the types of promises that we like to hear, but they are promises nonetheless. If only it wasn't so. It's tempting to think that being a Christian should somehow make life just a little bit easier. You know, if we could finally just do things right, work a little harder to live a better Christian life, maybe life would be a little easier. Read the Bible more. Pray without ceasing. Take church a little more seriously. Believe harder. Then life might be a little more blessed and joyous. Or better yet, maybe if God would just reward our good efforts. But that's not how it works. That's not to say that good days don't or won't come. They often do. Many of us right now might be experiencing great earthly blessings that bring feelings of peace and joy. And we should soak up every minute and thank God for today. Because tomorrow comes, and it's always unknown. Mortality is harsh. It brings all of us to our knees sooner or later. But being a Christian isn't about reaching and striving for some sort of perfection or earthly bliss that goes on indefinitely. If today's blessings seem to dissipate and our feelings of earthly peace and joy turn to temptation, suffering, pain, and sorrow, we have no reason to complain. We were never promised to be freed from this suffering, not on this side of eternity. But Jesus hasn't abandoned us. His word is true. We will weep and lament. We may face days of misery filled with complaining and moaning about what, what's become of life. But remember that tree that's been thrown into the midst of this bitterness. Because only eyes of faith can see the sweetness that it brings when life takes a hard turn and your world isn't what you expected or desired. Weeping, lament, sorrow, temptation, sickness, death. The death, the resurrection of Jesus stands in the midst of it all. Jesus said to the disciples in the Gospel reading, A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Jesus died. He was taken from their sight, but he rose again, and again they saw him. And through it all, they failed at Jesus. They abandoned him. They denied him. They doubted him. But still, he came back to them and loved them, just as he does to us. The days of sorrow are difficult. Jesus said, a little while. The disciples don't understand yet that Jesus is speaking about his resurrection. But he's also speaking about his second coming, the time that we are waiting for. You will see me, Jesus said. The time is short. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this life will end, and we will be with Jesus for eternity. The time doesn't feel short when you stand in the midst of it in the here and now, with its sin, its pain, its suffering, and death. But look, look back in time on your life, especially as old age begins to creep in, and you begin to realize that time in this flesh is just as the psalmist wrote. Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow, like an evening shadow. We wither away like grass. But we also confess with joy, as St. Paul wrote, this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Jesus said, your sorrow will turn into joy. And Jesus compares this sorrow that gives way to joy with a mother giving birth to a child. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish 
for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Now I imagine some others may disagree with Jesus. The anguish of labor is probably not forgotten. But the point still stands. When the mother is taken to the point of inexpressible suffering and pain, to the point where she can take no more, that precious life bursts forth from her womb. She hears the cries and sees the beautiful face. Now there's only joy. Even with all the sorrow and pain, it was all worth it. Sorrow gave way to joy and life. It's the way of the Christian. The sorrow, pain, and suffering, and anguish that we experience today will one day be taken for us forever. And it will be forgotten. And we will only know joy, sorrow, turned into joy. Joy that's above anything that we can experience or comprehend in this mortal life. In the end, all of our earthly sorrow and suffering, it doesn't define us. But while we live on this side of eternity, the sorrow and suffering that we experience will refine us. Because God is the one working in the midst of it to continually kill the old Adam, putting to death over and over again the sinful man in us with his word and spirit. He continues to work, to kill, and to make alive again and again. And he keeps us in true faith until the final day. It's the reason he so often lets trial and suffering and sorrow come our way. If he didn't, and we were just showered with all the desires and wishes of this flesh and the world, we would surely grow cold and come to trust in our flesh and in the world above all else. But God loves us, so he sends forth tribulation and sorrow. And through it, he turns our eyes to see that tree in the midst of the bitterness. And we see that Jesus is still here, crucified, yet risen, slain and yet alive, reigning for us, still coming to us. He's never truly left. The Lord never abandoned those Israelites in the wilderness even though they continue to turn their backs on him. He kept coming to them in the midst of every sin, temptation, suffering, and sorrow. And he preserved a remnant of true believers. And we are part of that remnant of true believers that see with eyes of faith the sweetness of the cross in the midst of our lives. Those Israelites would thirst again in the wilderness. And the Lord would again provide water, this time from a rock. We later learned from St. Paul that the rock was Christ. He was with those sinners the whole time. And he's still here with us today. He sees our sorrow, our sin, our pain, our suffering, and our death. And he brings the sweetness of himself again to us. And we eat of the fruit of that tree of life and we live. In a little while, he will return, and we will see him, and he will take us to be with him for eternity. So today, with Paul, we can say that we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. We have this hope today in Jesus, who is our eternal joy. So thanks be to Jesus, the sweetness that gives us hope and joy until the final day. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite the congregation in to please kneel for the prayer of the church. Gracious God and Father, we praise you for the countless blessings which we receive from your hand, the beauties of creation, the bounties of the earth, the joy of life, the pleasure of friendship, the good of work, the gift of rest, the privilege to share happiness and sorrow with one another. 
Above all, we praise and thank you for your saving word and your son's body and blood which you give us to eat and to drink in the sacrament. Through these means of grace, you send the Holy Spirit into our hearts and unite us to Jesus and to the whole Christian church on earth. Strengthen us through this heavenly food. Increase our trust in Christ and our love for one another. Great God and Lord, without your continuing help, we easily waver in our faith, lose courage, and grow careless in our watchfulness. The times and days are perilous. Give us strength to face the evils of each day with fresh confidence. Open our lips to speak of your grace, and move us to use the gifts that you give us to share your word of salvation with all people. Protect and prosper the family, the school, the government, and all good institutions that you have established for the benefit of society. Remember in mercy those who are sick and suffering, and bring your healing to troubled homes and lives. Heavenly Father, you have fashioned the church as a heavenly bride for your risen Son. Grant her your spirit that she may always listen to his deathless voice, and ever declare his message of hope, healing, and salvation. We also pray that you would bless the ministry in the home of Jason and Michelle, as he's ordained and begins his ministry at St. Paul's in Fort Wayne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you hold all people accountable for the responsibilities you have given to them. O oh Lord, bless President Biden, Governor Holcomb, the Congress, the legislature, all judges and magistrates. Guide them to serve according to your will and for the common good of all. Raise up those with heroic virtue who will defend our liberty. Protect those who defend us in the armed forces. Be with the people of Ukraine and give peace to the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Alpha and Omega, you pledge to bring all things to their perfect consummation. You will bring heaven to earth and banish sorrow, suffering, sin, and death. This day, O Lord, we especially pray that you would sustain Fred, Don, Helen, Tim, Donnie, Kim, Betty, Marlis, Ken, Shirley, Marlene, Betta, Jeff, Dusty, Stephanie, Kathy, Joan, Phil, Mel, Ron, Karen, Harold, and Conrad. O oh Lord, be with them in their time of trial and tribulation. By the comfort of your holy word, increase their faith and see them through all their trials. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Together then we pray, move us to pray for those in need and to help them with deeds of kindness. Now, eternal God and Father, keep us in the saving faith, and so enable us all to overcome all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like the congregation then to please stand as we continue with the service of the sacrament, beginning there with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms and placed all things under his feet for the benefit of the church. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne of the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and his command, and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night, when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let's do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord bless you, keep you, or make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. Welcome everyone this morning here in the name of the Lord. Just once again we can come here and be comforted with those words that in the midst of the trials of life, the Lord has conquered them all. And yes, we're going to, for a little while, go through some suffering. But in a little while, the Lord will come again. And He'll come again to do what? Well, we heard it here in our epistle reading. Jesus said, Behold, when I come again, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be His people. God Himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, crying, or pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, that's Jesus, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And that's the comfort that you leave with here today. Yes, we're going to pick up that cross and follow Jesus for a little while. We're going to go through that suffering. But behold, God is coming again. And the former things, the suffering of this life, will pass away forever. And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. And we give thanks to God for that great news here then to this day. A couple of announcements here today. First of all, we're going to kind of quickly go through the schedule here uh, for the upcoming week. Uh, this Tuesday, the Board of Preschool will meet at 5 o'clock Thursday morning. At 9, we continue our study of 2 Timothy. Uh, then Friday, we'll have our preschool graduation here in the gym. Uh, two graduation ceremonies as we split up the crowd. We've got a lot of graduates this year, so we have room for everybody. It'll be 5.30 and 6.30. And then also next Sunday, the ladies of the congregation are having a welcome home brunch uh, for Shella, my daughter, as she returns home. And uh, we'll be thankful to celebrate that here then next Sunday. Then also, and that will be following the 1045 service. Then also coming up, we haven't been able to do it due to COVID and, and several things here for the past couple summers, but we would like to get Vacation Bible School going again. In order, though, for this to happen, because we normally have 60-plus kids here, we need 12 kind of important people. We've got a lot of volunteers, but we've got to kind of get some people in leadership positions. They're all kind of listed for you there in the bulletin. If that is something that you would like to do or have kind of some questions about that, feel free to contact me or sign you here throughout the week. But we kind of need to know by this Friday whether we're going to have those people or not to make this fly. So we'd like to make this happen. And VBS, we're just, in order to get volunteers, we're kind of even knocking it down from five days to three days, just Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to 11.30. So if that's something you'd like to help us out with, uh, please sign up out there with those pink sheets that are there by Sonia's office in the hallway out there on the bulletin board. Well, this is, uh, it's sad, it kind of goes by so quick as he's kind of talking about life in the sermon, Jason said, kind of goes by very quick. And in, in a roundabout way, so has this past academic year. This is Jason and Michelle Zosky's last Sunday with us. And so at this time, we'd like to have a little presentation. Dr. Piazza Bryan is going to come forward here on behalf of the congregation and the Board of Elders. We'll have, we'll have Jason come over here. Michelle, why don't you come forward here as well? And we've got some things here that we're going to present to you on behalf of the Board of Elders and the congregation. We've been talking about, in, in Bible study, we've been going through the pastoral epistles and 2 Timothy. And we're talking about how the job of the church, the job of the pastors, is to guard this good deposit, which is the scriptures, the gospel, the sacraments. 
and to train faithful men who will then pass it on to the next generation. And in a roundabout way, that's a part of the, the whole thing that we're a part of here with our seminary and, uh, program here. He's number six, starting this fall, we'll have number seven with us. And the, what symbolizes that is what a pastor wears every Sunday, which is that soul. It shows that we're not our own man, we're not our own boss, we're under the yoke, we're under the authority of Christ. And so what we're going to do is present to Jason here this green stole here, which then symbolizes that fact that as he's going to be ordained here, he's going to be under the yoke here of, of Christ, and under his authority, he'll be sent out to preach and to teach God's word at the church and then also the school. And then, and then also here for their home, we have a, a cross that will uh, be given to them to remind them of Jesus Christ and who crucified, and that's what their home, that's what the ministry is all about. And then, as the ladies have done here over the last uh, couple of years, they want to give them a token and memento here of their time with us. So they have the anniversary plate, and then so that they can make some goodies here, they have uh, one of the Calvary cookbooks. So that, that'll be presented to them as well. And then, and then Brian has some words he'd like to, to share to them and to the congregation, words of thankfulness and gratitude for the time there that the Zoskis have spent with us. Time does fly very quickly. Um, on behalf of the Board of Elders and the entire congregation, we've been very blessed by your ministry. We ask for God's blessings as you answer your call to St. Paul in Fort Wayne. And we hope that we cross paths in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Pastor Almeyer, and all of you. It's been such a blessing, as I've said many times before, to be here with you this, through this whole year. Again, there's... I think 40 some guys in my class. I'm the only one that has anything like this. There's no other churches that are doing what Calvary is doing. So it, it's such a blessing, a blessing, and it's a testament to you what you know what you want to give back to us as we enter the ministry. So thank you for this opportunity. And no doubt we're going to take in these this year here and look back on it for many years to come, and just remember the blessing that it's been to us. So thank you, and God bless you. But Hopefully, we're not far away. We will probably see you again, God willing. So, thank you. We'll have to be the Indian giver. Yes. <laughs> so, that we'll take, so we'll take them. I always feel bad every year when we do this. After the first service, we have to take it back so we give it to you again at the end of the second service. But, but no, what a, what a joy and blessing here it's uh, been to have Jason and Michelle with us. I mean, it's just... All of you say that too. It's, it's such a year of growth for both us as pastor and congregation and also for the seminary and his family as we kind of see them uh, kind of mature and grow. And it's such a wonderful blessing that we can make something like this happen. And we'll look forward to uh, who we have again in the fall. It's always kind of an interesting thing how God brings us kind of just the right person for the time that where our congregation is at. And, and Jason has worked so hard. I, I told him I've never seen anybody do what, what, what he's all doing, to take the full load, to teach. He's been kind of already a, a somewhat of an acting principal. And, and to be here doing this as well, uh, he's learned a lot of time management skills. Uh, but he's going to be busy again as he's going to go back to school and be principal. He's going to go back and take some classes so he can get his principal license and everything. So he's always kind of doing so many, so many different things here. But we, we pray God's richest blessings upon you and your family. It's been a joy to uh, have you here with us this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Go ahead and turn your seat, Michelle. And then at the end of the service, Michelle, if you can go back and stand with Jason, and we'll, we'll have the congregation greet both of you here um, as we depart here. But no, it's, it's just been such a, such a fantastic year. We give thanks to God for the blessings that the Zoskis has brought to us. And so we'll conclude our worship then today with our closing hymn, as we sing him 822, Alleluia, let praises break. <laughs> 